I love jazz. Does anyone in this room love jazz? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> jazz was important to me since I've been six years old because my parents bought me a book about a cat who found who he was through music, who found what he wanted to do through music. Music, and jazz especially, has inspired me to become who I am in part. Jonathan London wrote Hip Cat. He was a hip cat, a hep cat, a cool cat, living all alone in a riverside shack, ooby doo John, the sax man and scat man, cat man. One day he said to himself, all I want to do is make jazzy music. So he picked up his sax, what his friends called his axe, and tipped his beret and said, scat cat, go cat, go. Hip cat daddy has got a horn to blow. And that cat scat. He hopped on the night train, the faster than light train. And, <clears throat> and in no time he came to a city by the bay. It was a bebop, rebop city. A bongo, congo, roller coaster, jazz in your bones city. Hip cat mosey along singing his song and swinging his sax. He slipped into Minnie's can do on Fillmore and said, Sweet Minnie, I want to blow my horn. Big Max the Nice Cat was reading poetry at the mic, stomping the floor to the rhythm of his words. And when he was through, our hip cat hero <coughs> with a horn to blow, blew! His sex bobbed and swung and screeched and sculped and purred. Bart. The cats in the club said, go cat, go! <coughs> and hip cat wailed into his horn. He wailed his song of longing, <coughs> his song of joy, his song of loneliness and loneliness. And the crowd went crazy! The joint was jumping, toes tapping and cats bopping, chairs dancing and shadows hopping. Still tapping his toes and bobbing his head, Hip Cat stopped blowing and started ooby dooing instead. Ooby dooey, blah blah blah. <coughs> so I'll be bop, wham up, bing bang, bang, shoo, why did he? My cat is a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> his new fans loved him, and many hugged him. He was a bad cat. A mad cat. A rad cat. But many could only pay him with peanuts. Now he was a penniless hip cat daddy young, with a tail to tell and a tail to wail. He hit all the jazz joints in town looking for a gig that would pay the rent. He was getting tired of living in a tent. But the joints were owned by all the top dogs. If cats wanted to make it, they couldn't take it. He said, if dogs can run free, why not me? So Ooby Doo played his sax under the bridges. He played in the fog, and he played on the ridges. He played all day, and he played all night. He played for no pay, but he kept up the fight. But he had to eat, and there was no money in sight. So he played his sax at all the tourist traps. Tourists with cameras tossed coins in his cap. Then he became a short order cook at the doggy diner. But he knew <coughs> he could do that. Something a whole lot finer. One night he slipped back into Minnie's can do. Minnie said, Ooby Doo, do what you do. Ooby Doo said, I'm feeling kind of blue. Minnie said, Sing it, you can do. Big Max and some mixed cats, and cats and mix were jamming on their axes playing some licks. They said, Who's that cat? That cat from the sticks? Then they remembered and shouted, Ooby Doo! Do what you do, let the cats out of the zoo. So he blew his horn, all bluesy and forlorn. Then he started singing better than ever before, remembering the river where he was born. Ooby dooey, blah blah blah. Shooby wa wimma bing bang blam. Shooby wa diddy, my cat is a king. And pretty soon word got around. Even the top dogs paid top dollar for Ooby Doo to wail at all the clubs. He played in the hungry eye. He played in the Hungry You. He played in the Purple Onion. <laughs> and when he was through, the crowd went hog wild. 
Now wherever he went, he went in style. He tore down his tent and paid the rent. He ate tall ice creams and paid all of his bills. <laughs> they called him a jazz magician, a great musician, and a poet of the blues. And when he rode the cable cars over the hills, his feet flew out in his shiny new shoes. Ruby Doo shouted, do what you love to do, and do it well. He was a hip cat daddy o with a tale to tell. He told it with his music, and his ooby doo wa diddy shooby wa day. My cat is a kitty, and we play all day. Even the fat cats in the river cats back at home listened to his music on the radio. They called him One Cool Daddy O. He was a hip cat, a hep cat, a cool cat, a bad, mad, rad cat. Ooby doo John, sax man, scat man, the long, <coughs> sweet. Catman. Questions, comments, things you liked about the story? Every cat has his day. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, why did you choose this particular children's story? Um, my parents, as the note in the front of the book, it says, Happy Sixth Birthday, Love Mom and Dad. Oh. So this is a book that I've had since I was a little kid that I just loved. So is jazz your favorite genre of music then? It's, it's up there. It's up there. That's his gentle way of saying no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but the book was right here. It's, it's probably second. Yeah. Okay. What age group when you like performance in the elementary school? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I was there. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> when you performed it, they're like, what age group reacted best to it? Um, I actually only got to read it to second graders. Okay. Um, oh, and they they were pretty interested. A lot of them were coloring. They were more, <laughs> there was one kid who was really excited because I think uh, me and someone else walked into the classroom and we both had glasses and beards and they were more excited about that. So for those of you that don't know, this is again from our class in oral interpretation of literature. So the students, we workshop the children's story in class and then we do it, they perform it in class and then we take a trip to an elementary school and they get to do their stories for the age group for which they're written and we like to experience the difference between doing this for college students and for, like I said, the age group intended. So we have a very good time on that day. Just the reactions of the, the kids is fun. And like you said, just the fact that you walked in with glasses and a beer, they thought, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Already. You're the cool. And then you read a cool story. <laughs> How did you decide what to do with your voice as you described the hip cat? What were some of the things you did in preparing for that, Matt? Um, when I was trying to build the character of uh, Ubi Doo Jan, um, I, th I thought about jazz music stations, especially smooth jazz later at night, mm -hmm. and I just tried to emulate that. Yeah. Um, Minnie's voice, of course, I tried to make just a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. uh, being old. Um, and then I just narrated in a little bit smoother voice than I naturally have, just to kind of keep the theme. Where do you think the climax of the story is? I think his comeback um, is where the climax of the story is. It shows him going through hardship, and, and that's kind of the build of the arc. And it ends up with him playing in the Purple Onion, which gets a good chuckle out of everybody. But that's, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the story is concerned, that's the third show he plays, and that's when he's really made it. It becomes popular. I wonder how people would have responded if he said Purple Rain. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just a block. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you.